Hello once again, and uh, welcome to the first installment of what I would like to call the Modern Wanderers series. I'm pretty sure someone has already taken that name before, but you know, I'll just try to adapt to it as much as I can. We'll see what else I call this. I mentioned last time that uh, there is a lot of um, footage that I kind of have on the back burner of um, my travels and my experiences. I want to present that from, I would say, the first time that I started looking beyond the borders of my state, so to speak. I have been, I've traveled a bit before, but never alone, never to like look at a specific subject. From 2016 onwards is when I say my real personal journey began, so I want to show that here. I do want to address a little bit of a disclaimer though. This first installment is not how I want to present it. I did have more footage, more video about this experience, but uh, unfortunately that has been lost in a hard drive, which is sitting there on the cabinet. I just haven't had time to repair it. It is a little pricey to do that as well, so it'll have to wait a little bit longer, unfortunately. So for now, I'm just going to present this in a narration style slideshow, so to speak. This first experience is my uh, first visit to Ireland, and it was the one that kind of opened my eyes to everything around me and everything in the wider world. And honestly, it was the trip that impulsed me to go back. That and added experiences over time. But that was, I guess, the door opener. Something to mention is that my narration is based on reports that I made at the time, back in 2016. It's been a few years since that, obviously, so what I have said back then may not reflect what I say now or what I understand now about Ireland. So please take all of what I say with a grain of salt. I did my best to research everything as thoroughly as possible and that is what resulted in my reports. But I just want people to know that we try our best but not we're not perfect. So once again I am mainly doing these just for myself, just kind of like a personal record keeper. I'm more doing this for myself, trying to keep a record of my own life and just making sure I don't lose any of this. Making sure I don't lose any of the memories, the reminders and such. So this is a good way to do that. But um, to those that do watch this, uh, please enjoy. And here we go. This is a personal narrative on the cultural experience of Ireland composed on November 28th, 2016. And what I would like to call my love letter to Ireland. Culture from my perspective defines a people who live in a certain region of the world and the adaptations people make to fit in with their surroundings both physically and socially. Throughout my life, I have been presented to the American and Mexican cultural experiences, both separately and combined in Hispanic communities. Seeing the bridging of these two cultures helped me interpret the world I had grown up in. Having grown up among two cultures, I feel like I did not have the cultural barriers others have had, and I am thankful for that. Understanding the people that live in both the United States and Mexico, and the history of both areas, helped me understand their culture. But I did not fully understand what culture meant until I dived headfirst into said culture to understand it fully. For the trip to Ireland, I did the same thing. While having prior knowledge of Ireland did give me an idea of what Ireland was, it wasn't until I was immersed in the Irish culture, in other words, every single aspect about Ireland that I could absorb within the month that I was there. I will present a narrative of my lived experience in Ireland and analyze the importance of Irish culture, as well as how encountering different cultures aids us in understanding the people we associate with in our everyday lives. Ireland is a very culturally rich place. Physically, it is very different from the landscape I am used to. Growing up in an arid place, constant rainfall and green scenery is very pleasant and welcoming. Culturally, I was not sure what to expect upon my arrival. However, something I have learned through my travels is to forget any prior knowledge of the place I will travel to and just immerse myself in the experience of the country, in this case Ireland. I read beforehand what there was to know about Ireland, but I knew the information would not help me until I experienced Ireland in person. Of course, whether we like it or not, we always go into a country with a bias of our own culture, and this gives us an incomplete concept, like an unsolved puzzle. I expected all Irish to be heavy drinkers, 
which, as I will explain later, was not the case. Removing the veil of ignorance is the first step in encountering culture at its fullest. Upon my arrival to Dublin, I came to realize it was just a city like many others, yet with its own distinctive flair. Wandering downtown, among historic districts and modern venues of commerce, everything I observed with my sensory experience told me I was just in another city and not to worry about anything that would come up. Asking around for my hostel, every person I asked was happy enough to either point me in the right direction or guide me a certain distance to my destination. It was like small town directional guidance, but on a larger scale. While this experience was something I was not expecting, it was very relieving to get some help for going around town. Walking around, I saw people moving about, speaking to one another, going into a pub, working in their jobs, and basically living their everyday lives. It was very nice to see. Communities in Ireland, as I experienced them, covered a very broad spectrum. The divisions between urban and rural are obvious, but district to district seem very complex. In Dublin, the locals divide the city into two parts, north and south of the River Liffey. Southerners were a mixed bunch, able to converge in any conversation willing to help the tourists. The northerners, while slightly ruder, were just as friendly, but more focused on themselves and not speaking to many tourists. Major differences between North and South Dublin were, of course, the tourist districts, with more emphasis on the tourist market in the South than in the North. What brought them together was large social gatherings and the fact that both areas called themselves the true Dubliners. I mentioned the differences between urban and rural communities and the transition from urban to rural surprised me. Everyone in Ireland is very friendly, but there is no comparison to the close-knit community of the rural town. Kilcommon was very stunning, not only for its secluded beauty, but also because of the people who lived there and their shared experience with Rossport and the Corrib Gas Company controversy, something that undoubtedly brought many communities in that area of County Mayo together. The Geltacht areas that we visited seem to always share not only a similar language, but also an agricultural background despite modernization. Everyone in the Geltacht seemed to keep more to themselves than people in larger cities in Ireland. Yet everyone in these rural communities have so much respect for the land they live on. As described in this quote, One of the most important facets of the psyche of the Irish must be the love they bear for their damp little country. Since the arrival of the first farmers on the shores of Ireland nearly 7,000 years ago, the soil of Ireland has been sacred, a living organism which held the secrets of life and fertility. End quote. I believe the main aspect of what makes an Irish community unique is its isolation relative to other areas of the world. By this I mean Ireland is an island country covering a small area of the world with few people living in it. This allows for unique developments among the communities. The upside to isolation is a strong tradition, the downside being no advancement in global relationships, at least not until recent times, with the advent of technology. This difference of culture through isolation is observable between the towns surrounding Dublin in the east, closer to the British Isles and mainland Europe, and the towns around Galway in the west. The Irish describe these western towns as follows, quote, The western isolation of the Atlantic coasts of Ireland has made them the last cultural outpost of the European continent. Until modern times, the traditional lifestyle of its fishermen and pastoralists remained essentially prehistoric, with archaic practices such as Rundale farming and transhumans still common." End quote. Rundale farming is the communal sharing of fields, and transhumans is the moving of animals to upland summer pastures. An event I would like to consider a ritual there was a music festival in Sligo that I attended. Originally, I was not sure what to make of the whole situation, being in a different country and all. Walking next to the river Garavog, I noticed a stage set in a square on one side of the river. I asked the security guard what all the fuss was about, and he told me it was a music festival free for everyone. Of course, hearing the word free, I chose to enter. The festival was the Sligo Festival, and I believe a band known as the Stripes were playing that day. The events that unfolded, typical of any festival, went as follows. People began to gather. The announcer mentioned who was going to play, People stood up along their families and friends or went to get a snack or drink. The band came out to do a sound check, 
and then the music began. The main thing that struck me as interesting was that people danced to the band's music and people socialized with each other. Of course, this is seen in American music festivals as well, but in Ireland it seemed that people socialized at a much higher level past the individual. By this I mean that large groups of people from this community in Sligo went to enjoy a day out, and everyone who participated socialized with each other. Everyone seemed to do their own thing, but also interact with others at the same time. This allowed for mass communication through music and a social gathering in a large area, something very beneficial to a community at a social and economic level. Not only was it very interesting to see, but this major event was also very fun to have participated and interacted in. Another ritual that was very common throughout Ireland was the most obvious one, being the ritual of going to a pub. Something that I would like to mention is the observation that people in Ireland drink differently than people in America. The reason is because the pub is the social center of a city or town. Many different people from many different walks of life will be found at a pub, and they are there to express what is on their mind. The same cannot be said for bars in America. The reason is that people in Ireland drink to socialize and enjoy a night out with friends and strangers. And here in America, the socializing aspect seems to have been left out. I believe this action of socializing, not just in a pub, is what defines the Irish community since everyone is always talking and discussing things like they are among friends, even with complete strangers. Going back to this ritual of socializing in a pub, the chain of events are as follows as I experienced them in all the pubs I visited. I walked in alone, went to the bar or table, spoke with the bartender or server, ordered something to eat, and a pint, and got down to business. Usually. I would eat alone, but sometimes another lonely passerby or even a group of friends would chime into my personal space just to speak about anything that came to mind, which I had no problem with. The time spent would end with handshakes all around. The final ritual was the Gaelic football match. Living in a Hispanic American culture where both types of football, soccer and American football are the popular sport, I had never seen or heard of Gaelic football until I personally saw this match, which was the Kerry vs. Clare game, if my memory serves me right. Hearing the word football in Gaelic football made me think of both games I had associated with in the society that I lived in. But watching the game itself made me fully understand the concept. What surprised me was how extremely popular the sport was. But this shouldn't have surprised me, since the sport was being played in its native land. Either way, a packed stadium is quite a sight to see as well as going along with the cheering and chanting, despite not rooting for any of the teams. I felt the same way in the pub in Donegal, watching the Donegal vs Dublin game, but this time rooting for the local team since it was their hometown. Also quite interesting to watch were the hurling games on television, as well as attempting to participate in the sport of hurling itself, despite failing quite badly. In a way, these events gave me a sense of acceptance, a sense of understanding the Irish better. One norm that appeared quite frequently was a simple one, of which many of the participants of this trip noticed among bus or truck drivers. Whenever these motorists passed each other on a small street, they would keep their hands on the steering wheel, but they would raise their index and middle fingers as a salutation to the other driver, like a wave. I'm not sure what to make of this norm, but I believe it originated from the use of large machinery in narrow country roadsides. What I mean is the streets are very narrow in many areas of Ireland, mainly in rural places like Kildare, but also in certain urban settings like Waterford and even in Dublin. The skill it takes to navigate a large motor vehicle like a bus or an 18-wheeler through these small streets requires more than knowing how to move the steering wheel. It also takes communication from drivers on the opposite sides of the road. When two large vehicles meet on opposite sides of a narrow road, both cannot pass at the same time, so there's an instance of camaraderie that allows one or the other to pass. The salutation of these two fingers was a way to keep control of the vehicle while saying thank you. I believe this custom stuck for a while. It is quite different than the custom here, where we expressively wave to show our gratitude, or flip the bird to show the opposite. Another norm that I encountered was a bit unsettling for me. I was stopped by a homeless woman pushing a baby carriage, saying that they were going to kick her out of a hostel she was staying at and needed money. I only gave her 20 euros, but I noticed during this time that she pleaded for help 
Everyone around me just seemed to pass by and not care about her predicament. I wasn't sure why, and I kept seeing this in all major cities of Ireland. I then noticed how street performers and simple street merchants were giving more money to sustain themselves than those who only begged. It was still a somewhat disturbing experience. The usual stereotype people associate Irishness with is of course the beer, but I prefer to go with their accent and the way they interact with others. The accent of course always stands out to people who speak different dialects of English. In everyday life, they always seem to communicate like they are among friends, speaking their mind and inserting a bit of sarcastic humor within their conversations, talking quickly and to the point. Something I also noticed about Irishness was the limited but quite relevant sense of patriotism. 2016 was the centennial year for the 1916 rebellion, which many considered to be the beginning of Irish independence, and many were proud of this fact. Overall, I regarded the Irish to be a mix of many traits and qualities, but most of all kind. Those I spoke to fit these criteria, and they took this as a compliment. Of course, all humans express a variety of traits and the Irish are no different. In many places that I visit, I regard my nationality as American, but my ethnicity and culture as Mexican-Hispanic. Over in Ireland, the people I spoke to seemed to have an appreciation of a person with a diverse background, showing interest in my family history and the area where I live. Of course, I also noticed that being a Hispanic does ascribe to a stereotype, one of which is expressing myself in a Hispanic language. By this I mean I was asked quite frequently if I spoke Spanish, and happy to oblige, I would respond in Spanish. And this seemed to be respected a lot, including by a man named John of Kilcommon, who was married to a Mexican woman. We also had a small conversation in Spanish, and it was quite enjoyable. I do not believe there was anything I could do to deal with the culture shock that I felt through the trip. I have traveled throughout my life ever since I was a toddler, and I have always felt culture shock regardless of the setting I had been in, mainly because of the exposure to different cultures and landscapes. It was this exposure that allowed me to appreciate all these experiences. Another thing is that my mother traveled with me, and I always had someone to speak to in my travels. While in this trip I was alone for about a week and a half, given that I had not joined my class at that time. Of course, I was in a majority English-speaking country, but the dialect, the lush green fields, the appreciation for the surroundings, and many other aspects of Ireland made me feel quite alone and lost to an extent. The physical, cultural, and social aspects made me understand that I was not at home. I also noticed many instances of culture shock among the participants of the group that I had joined afterwards. I remember this incident with a window that they believed was broken, but it was really not. This was because the European windows are designed to open certain ways with the turning of a knob or handle, and turning this knob or handle can open the window either fully or partially. I have seen a similar system at work in Germany, but for those visiting Europe for the first time, this type of technology would seem alien. Also, something quite alien was the fact that this was the first time some of us in the group had started drinking publicly, since the drinking age of Ireland is 18 years old. There were other instances of culture shock among the group that were far more serious, but I will not mention them. However, I believe it is safe to say that we all felt it to some degree. I believe a mistake I did was trying to reconnect with the culture I was accustomed with. It did not help that the Kinley House, the first hostel I stayed in, was right next to a Mexican restaurant called Café Azteca. I learned from the desk clerk that many Spanish and Hispanic students that attended college chose to stay in this hostel, and the Mexican restaurant helped them integrate better into Irish society. This place helped me integrate with the culture, and it made me feel a bit closer to home since Hispanics ran this Mexican restaurant. I made it my goal to find as many Hispanic restaurants as I could in Ireland and if they were run by Hispanics, to speak to the owners and workers and hear their story. In a way, this gave me a sense of comfort, or rather a sense of feeling closer to the home I knew. Regardless of this, observing my surroundings made me understand that I was in a place I was not accustomed to be in. Therefore, doing my best to ignore the culture shock. I made it my task to learn as much as possible from the areas I was staying at and visiting. My reasoning is if I was to get the fullest experience out of this trip, I would need to put my emotions and stresses aside and just take everything in. Otherwise, I would not get very far in terms of observing the culture I was in. Thus, 
I did my very best to explore my surroundings and speak to people to fit in. I consider this to be the best option, since communication among the locals and a foreigner allows for the foreigner to become more of a local. The point of traveling to another country is to encounter the culture of the other country, not just as a tourist, but as a person. Exploring Ireland on my own and figuring out how to communicate helped me see how important it is to understand other cultures overall. Reading about the history, speaking to people, hearing the music, seeing the landscapes, and many other things helped me see the true Ireland and all its wonders. To expand on what I am saying, taking in everything about a culture is the only way we, as foreigners visiting another country, can understand how the people of this culture are, thus allow for better social structures and bridging divides between all kinds of people. In the time I spent alone, I got to hang out with one of the tour guides of Dublin's inner city, a man by the name of Patrick Hughes. While on the tour, I asked him many questions regarding Ireland's culture, and he was more than happy to answer them. After that, we chose to hang out at one of the local pubs. He turned out to be a nice person, and sent me a book on the importance of the environmental effect on human relationships called The Spell of the Centuries. These communications between many different people in Ireland help me close the gap between stranger and friend, and all it takes is the courage to speak. It helped me get out of my normal comfort zone, which in turn will benefit the relationships I built up over the years. Many things stood out to me. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to find in Ireland originally, but something I did expect were many trees, as well as heavy drinkers. Of course, trees do exist, but most of the land is developed for agriculture. Also, the Irish are not heavy drinkers, they drink normally. That is the major stereotype that originally had me worried, but going out and exploring the nightlife changed that view. The Irish, while culturally different, are only humans, just like any other race or nationality around the world. Everyone has a way to socialize in a festive setting, and drinking can be involved, but it is always to socialize among friends and strangers, and just to have a good time overall. The excursion to Ireland will be something I will never forget due to all the experiences I lived while visiting there. Their culture is very rich and accepting to all people. Getting to know the Irish opened my mind and giving me a reason to go back to Ireland, something I hope to do in the future. It tore down the boundaries I set up in my mind, those boundaries of ignorance, and helped me indulge in the culture, which I was more than happy to do.